the funeral procession for Kian Lloyd de los Santos in the Philippines on Saturday. The killing of the 17-year-old has rankled the government and forced President Rodrigo Duterte to acknowledge that there may have been police lapses. Rolex de la Penny European Press Photo Agency Manila Thousands of Filipinos poured out of their homes to join a funeral march on Saturday for Kian Lloyd de los Santos, the 17-year-old boy whose death at the hands of the police has galvanized opposition to President Rodrigo Duterte's brutal war on drugs. Students joined nuns, activists and even supporters of Mr. Duterte as an estimated 5,000 people marched in light rain, demanding accountability from the president, who has appeared to soften his tough anti-crime rhetoric and has ordered the detention of three police officers pending an investigation into the killing. I hope that what happened to my son will not happen to members of their families, Saldi de los Santos, the boy's father, said of the police officers. He wore a white shirt with the words Justice for Kian written on an image of a black ribbon. The whole village knows my son is a good boy, he added. All he knows is how to help the family. How can they say he was on drugs? Lorenzo de los Santos and Saldi de los Santos hold each other during a church mass before burial of their son in Caloocan City, northeast of Manila. Rolex de la Penny European Press Photo Agency next to him was his wife, Lorenza de los Santos, who wept silently as a stream of mourners stopped by a small neighborhood church in Caloocan, a mostly poor, northern Manila suburb, where a funeral mass was offered for their son. The teenager was among 96 people killed in the Manila area in what the police called a one-time, big-time crackdown on drug dealers and adepts in the capital and in several sprawling suburbs. His death has rankled the government and forced Mr. Duterte to acknowledge publicly that there may have been lapses. On Saturday, the president's spokesman, Ernesto Abella, said the government would not tolerate wrongdoings or illegal acts from any law enforcement officer. That statement was a reversal from Mr. Duterte's words last week, when he appeared to encourage the police to kill more drug suspects after praising them for a bloody anti-narcotics operation that has left nearly 100 people dead, the bloodiest siege so far since he began the campaign last year. Students joined nuns, activists and even supporters of Mr. Duterte in a march on Saturday to demand accountability. Rolex de la Penny European Press Photo Agency Mr. de los Santos death has raised serious questions about how the police conduct raids. Mr. Abella said that the government's public prosecutor had filed criminal complaints of murder against the officers involved at the Justice Department, underscoring the resolve of the government, he added, let us allow the legal process to run its course and trust the justice system under the Duterte presidency, Mr. Abella said. The complaint followed a Senate inquiry on Thursday during which forensics investigators and the public attorney's office testified that Mr. De Los Santos had been shot at close range while kneeling. That account contradicted the police's narrative that he had been shot because he had fought with the officers. Pictures provided by investigators showed the dead teenager with a gun in his left hand, even though the boy was right hand. Relatives of Kian De Los Santos carry his casket at a cemetery in Manila. Laurent Fivet agents France Press, Getty Images A closed-circuit television camera showed the police officers leading the boy away minutes before he was found lifeless in a nearby cul-de-sac, with at least two gunshot wounds to the head and torso. Three witnesses, two of them minors, came forward to testify against the police. My son was begging them, the elder Mr. De Los Santos said at the march. He said he wanted to go home because his father was looking for him. To the policeman who killed an innocent person, go to church. It's not too late to ask for forgiveness. The politically influential Roman Catholic Church, which counts 80% of Filipinos as members, has used the death of the teenager to call on Mr. Duterte to stop what it called his ill-conceived war on drugs. On Saturday, one of its most outspoken priests, the Rev. Robert Reyes, led the funeral march and attacked Mr. Duterte's campaign against crime, which he said was clearly, a war on the poor. I think if you look around, the majority of those who joined the march are from the ranks of the poor, he said. All were shouting, justice for Kian. People may be wondering, is this boy the new Nanoye mourner breaks out in tears as the coffin of Kian de los Santos is carried on a street in Manila, Philippines. Francis Armalis, a European press photo agency, he was referring to Benino S. Aquino Jr., known as Ninoy, who staunchly opposed the dictator, Ferdinand e. Marcos. Mr. Aquino was gunned down in 1983 on the tarmac of the Manila airport upon returning from exile in the United States. Mr. Marcos was widely blamed for the assassination. His death united the opposition, and the effort grew into a people power revolution that toppled Mr. Marcos three years later. His widow later became president, and his son and namesake preceded Mr. Duterte in the position. 
Whether Mr. De Los Santos' death will translate into a united front against Mr. Duterte is unclear. The call for justice has begun, said Edwin Lacierda, a political strategist and former spokesman for the younger Mr. Aquino. The Senate hearings and rallies have seen to that. That call for change has likewise begun, both from the people and those within the government. Mourners look on as Kian De Los Santos is buried in Calucan. Romeo ran a Reuters where it leads, we do not know, he added. But certainly, the people can no longer tolerate the binary attitude of condemning the killings but not calling to account Mr. Duterte. For the time being, he said, the boy's death had forced the public to face and confront reality, no longer with timidity. On Saturday, supporters of Mr. Duterte joined the crowd at the funeral march and cried with the boy's father. Some, including Michael Alberto Durang, a 20-year-old college student, said he had voted for Mr. Duterte. He displayed a wristband bearing the president's name. Relatives and loved ones of Kian Lloyd de los Santos cried during a church mass before his burial in Calucan City. Rolex de la Penny European press photo agency I used to believe in Duterte's promise to end crime, he said, and in fact, I think that is partly true. But I never wanted deaths for the innocent. Stop these killings. Instead, arrest drug lords and others, he said it was clear that Mr. De Los Santos had been a victim of the police wanting to impress Duterte. He promised us a better life, Mr. Durang said of Mr. Duterte. Death for the innocent is not the change we want.